Hello there and welcome to this new video. I talk about how I can work together with imported 3D models and the Flip Fluids add-on. Here we go. Maybe you know the problem too. You bought a 3D model from the internet and want to use it in a Flip Fluids simulation, but it doesn't work. And in the worst case, Blender even crashes or there are error messages. So what can I do in such a case? I will use Blender Kids models in this video. They have a huge library of high quality models and I really love the way the amazing add-on is working in Blender. If something like this is interesting for you, then you will find a link to Blender Kit in the video description. I will load a 3D model from there. And before I'm going to use it as a flip fluids object in any way, I need to check if this model will work. I have to take a close look at the imported model. A really great tool that Blender already comes with is called the 3D Print add-on. And as the name suggests, the add-on's job is to prepare a model for 3D printing. And that's exactly what I need for a flip fluid simulation. I can activate it in Blender's preferences and it's already available for analysis. Now I select my object and in the 3D print add-on I can check for non-manifold data. And if there is some I can click clean up and then the make manifold button. When doing this take care because it could modify the object in an unwanted way. Anyway, that's perfectly fine because I only want to use this object for simulation. Therefore, I always recommend first animate everything as desired and then use a duplicate for the simulation which remains invisible for the rendering. I will also go into the topic of complex geometry later because we have found a solution for that too. Check again for non-manifold data and that's all. This object is now ready to be used in a flip fluid simulation. In the next example I want to import an FBX animation and use it as an obstacle. Ryan and I discovered Adobe's Maximus site for our experiments. You can also find the link in the video description. Here I can download some great FBX files, such as a jumping figure and then easily import them into Blender via import FBX. Always play the animation and adjust the model size. And then I can design my scene appropriately. Blender Kit also has a lot of inspiration here. And then of course the model still has to be made simulation compatible for the flip fluids add-on. It's relatively quick and easy once you know how. For example, I cannot use the armature itself for the simulation, but if I take a closer look with the outliner I can find related child objects and they can be used. A little trick is with a right click on the armature I can directly select the whole hierarchy and then only have to click the obstacle button from the helper menu, because all selected objects are turned into obstacles by our add-on. The other options like force field, inflow or outflow would of course also work, but in my opinion it only makes sense to use the little man as an obstacle. And now comes a very important step, export animated mesh must be activated. And to do that I have to select each object individually to be sure the checkbox is checked. So, that it doesn't get too confusing, there's a very helpful overview of objects to be exported in the domain box settings. I select the domain box and open the more baking settings panel. And then there is a skip mesh re-export panel. And when that is expanded, all objects that have been activated for this operation are displayed with. Depending on the size of the scene, now based on the animation's content, it is advisable to activate the skip function. If you do that, then the animated model, this applies to each frame by the way, is not exported again for the simulator. However, if you have made a change, you have to deactivate this function, otherwise the simulator will fall back on the then outdated data. That's why there is also the force function here which initiates a new export once and then automatically suspends the export again. Clever, isn't it? 
However, this function is not yet supported by the CMD operators at the moment, just as a side note. Okay, so I have enabled the objects for the animated magic board. I have also enabled the skip function and I also enabled the force function. Actually, I could start the simulation now, but first I want to make sure that I have chosen the right simulation settings for me. That's why I always recommend simulating a frame area that is particularly interesting first. And if the result is good, then I can simulate all frames. Incidentally, our add-on notices whether data from the animation mesh export is still missing within a certain frame range and in this case export it even if the skip function is actually activated. As you can see, no effort has been spared in the Flip Fluids add-on to enable us artists to work as carefree and above all motivating as possible. Then there is the issue of terrain. I once created a terrain with the software Gaia in order to use it in Blender. Of course, water should run down, but the terrain must be made suitable for simulation. This is not always the case, because the terrain is nothing more than a surface deformed with the help of a displace modifier, which means it is thin. Strictly speaking, it has no volume, but the simulator needs that. Here in the example you can see what else happens. The liquid just runs through it. The fastest solution, which also works very well in this case, is to simply apply a solidify modifier. I just make the terrain thick enough. And also important, I make the domain as small as possible, so I can shorten the simulation time a bit. That's actually all. But there's one more useful tip that I would like to share. If I want to simulate flowing water, then I first have to wait until the water is flowing everywhere I need it. With high simulation settings, this can take quite a long time, but I can simulate this startup phase in a very low resolution, then increase the simulation resolution and then start repeatedly from a previous point in time. In this special case, the add-on notices that simulation data is already available and upscales the finished simulation frame to the new resolution. The simulation then continues from there with a new high resolution. So only the first frame viewed from the safe state is scaled up and after that everything is recalculated. By the way, which preview starting points are available can be easily viewed here in the domain settings. The interval for saving the save state is specified here. Ok, so what can I do if I have a very thin object but a solidity modifier won't work with it? For example, because my thin object has its own volume. The best example I can think of is a bottle or a glass which of course has a certain thickness and those also have volume between the surfaces, but is very thin. To explain this briefly, how well a very thin object works in the simulator depends on the simulation resolution. Here too, I use the 3D print add-on to check whether the object is basically ok. I like to use the add-on's debugging feature. This loads my object into the viewport from the perspective of the simulator and makes me understand what the problem is. There are now different solutions and I have to decide what is right for my case. First of all, I make a copy of my object here, which I only use for the rendering and I optimize the duplicate for the simulator. Accordingly, I then have to activate or deactivate the objects for rendering. Idea 1. I select all outer surfaces and extrude them manually. This works better for one object than for the other. It just depends on the situation. Idea 2. I use my object as an inverted obstacle. The empty space between the object and the domain box is then filled in, so to speak, and only the part in the inverted obstacle is used for the simulation. In order for this to work, the scene must be prepared accordingly. 
The object must therefore be given a cover so that it is initially separated from the empty space. In addition, the outer surfaces must be deleted, so that our object itself no longer has any more enclosed volumes. And if there is an inflow object, it must also be included accordingly. As an idea by pulling the lid up far enough. But these are all temporary solutions. If I want to achieve high quality simulation with very thin objects which have their own volume, then the high simulation resolution is always the better choice. A duplicate is then not necessary. Good things take time. Finally, I now take up the previously mentioned topic of complex geometry. Because this is where there can be a lot of frustration when I want to use a complex imported model for simulation. First of all, I would like to give you the good news that the latest Flip Fluids add-on version includes a new function, a remeasure tool. This operator uses a number of Blender internal tools to make complex geometry usable. Depending on when you see this tutorial, it may be that this function is not yet running optimally. It just hasn't been tested for all scenarios yet. But what does it do? In short, it applies the modifiers of all objects within a collection. All objects can then be joined with this and the resulting individual object then gets remesh modifier. And the product can then be used in a flip fluid simulation. It is also taking into account whether objects should not be joined due to animation data. So again, the Blender Kit add-on. You have chosen the construction side vehicle. It has a special feature that it is rigged, which allows for great animations. And that's exactly what I'll start with, with a small animation of the vehicle. Now that everything is prepared, I will create a duplicate of the vehicle, which I will prepare for the simulator. Sometimes strange things happen when duplicating, but in this case you can just ignore it, as long as everything keeps working. When I shift click on the render object collection eye, it becomes completely invisible to the viewport. Later I do the same with the camera icon of the simulation collection, but only after I have prepared everything. It is very important that it is only done after the preparations. In the preparation model it is noticeable that the wheels are moving and the vehicle tilts as it accelerates and brakes. Joining all objects now would result in individual animations being lost. The new remesh operator can take that into account, but I also need to flag that accordingly. First I open the Prepare Geometry Tools panel in the Helper menu. The first two checkboxes indicate that objects that are not yet mesh will be converted to a mesh, and that modifiers are applied to their objects, otherwise it would not be possible to join all objects. The third checkbox indicates that objects marked accordingly are excluded from the operator. In my case, that would be important for all animated objects, so I have to activate this checkbox. We have considered the following workflow for marking animated objects. I disable all relevant objects for rendering. So all objects that have their own animations must have a deactivated camera in the outliner at the end. This definitely needs to be checked. In my case, that's all the wheels. And since the rest of the vehicle moves in exactly the same way, I don't need to do anything else. In the helper I check whether the correct collection is being edited. And then I click on Flip Fluids Remesh Collection button. It doesn't take too long and I see the remeshed vehicle. It may not look very pretty because the remesh modifier is messing it up. But that's not important at all because it only serves the simulator. And I can set the corresponding modifier according to my preferences. Before I turn all objects into obstacles, I optimize everything. I apply the remesh modifier and then use a decimate modifier to reduce his face count. I can now also remesh and decimate all other objects. This all helps to improve the simulation time. 
You don't necessarily have to do this, but it may make a lot of sense to optimize what you can optimize. With a right click in the outliner, I can now select this entire collection, including all objects, and turn it into an obstacle. And here too, it is important to activate Export Animated Mesh. I get the overview from the domain settings again for help. And then I can start. Depending on how many faces the objects still have, exporting can take a while. It's good that there's a skip function, but as I said, optimizing all objects is always recommended. Finally, I have to make all simulation objects invisible for the rendering. As a reminder, with shift left click on the camera of the corresponding simulation collection. Yes, great. That is all. I hope this tutorial will help you in working with imported objects. Let us, the Flipgrids add-on development team, know if you have any questions, improvement ideas or find bugs. Alright, so thank you for watching, leave a comment and goodbye.